welcome to my podcast. My name is Cheyenne and I'm here with Donovan Stanley. Today we will be talking about the movie, The Current War, starring Benedict Cumberbatch, well known for his role as Doctor Strange in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Before we get on with the podcast, I want to thank my brother for knowing what was what he was doing and explaining history in dummy terms to me. I would also like to thank myself for selecting this class before knowing what it was. The Current War, our, our podcast movie selection, opens in 1880 as the so-called Gilded Age is getting into full swing. Snippets of these times are throughout the entire movie, inventions, Immigrants, money, poverty, corruption, the movie had it all. Where did the term Gilded Age come from? What does it mean anyway? There is some interesting history about that. The Gilded Age notably ranged from 1878 to 1889. It was a period of gross materialism and blatant political corruption in U.S. history during the 19th century. This time in history gave rise to the, some important novels of social and political criticism. The novels were one substitution for social media during this phase. The period make, takes its time from the earliest of these writers, Mark Twain, in collaboration with Charles Dudley Warner, who wrote the novel The Gilded Age. So that's where the phrase came from, Mark Twain. Yes, Mark Twain coined the phrase The Gilded Age in his 1873 novel of the same name. He used the phrase to describe the era's patina of splendor, meaning a thin cover of gold, a process we call gilded. And remember, gilded, after all, is not gold, and that describes the shaky foundations under aging the in industrialist vast accumulation of wealth. Yes, the timeline of the movie The Current War corresponds to the Gilded Age. The opening scene takes place in 1880. Big business and immigration in the U.S. was on the rise. This is shown in the movie by the electric companies fight against each other to be the first to provide electric lighting to the changing United States. The players in the movie, Edison, Westinghouse, and Tesla, thought that the provider of the resources to light up the nation would become among the wealthiest men on earth. This was also the time period where more U.S. areas were being urbanized, shown in the movie in the form of the cities that were selected to have lights installed. More people working in fact, more people were working in factories. There was also a World Fair in Chicago in 1893, which showed how the upper and middle classes had extra time and money for leisure activities and luxuries. Much of the American economy during this time relied on the railroads as they were faster and easier to transport goods. Actually, you could credit the fast dis distribution of Edison and Westinghouse's equipment in parallel with the development of the railways. Is the, war is the current war a true story? Yes, it is based on true happenings. Michael Mitnick began writing the script for the movie in 2008, basing it on the real conflict between Edison and Westinghouse. This conflict was concerning the use of AC or DC current for the emerging electrical grid as they were that they were competing to build. So Michael Mitwick took over 10 years to research and write this movie. He must have read everything he could find about Edison, Westinghouse, and Tesla. Several of the critics commented that if Mitnick had written more about the people and less about the events, the movie would have achieved more awards. Did you know Mitwick attempted to write the drama first as a musical? Before he was finished, he had over six drafts. When was the movie released? The Current War, which is a catchy name by the way, was first announced in May of 2012, and the director, Gomez Rajon was confirmed in September of 2015. Cumberbatch, Shannon, and Holt joined the cast by October 2016, and the movie was filmed in England. The first premiere of the movie was at Toronto International Film Festival on September 9th, 2017. 
Something must have happened because it didn't release in the US until October of 2019. Yes, you've assumed correctly. Originally, the movie was to be distributed by the Weinstein, Weinstein Company. Weinstein went to jail, though, for following sexual abuse allegations, and the movie was shelved. It was eventually brought by Lantern Entertainment, which sold the U.S. distribution rights to 101 Studios. The movie was released on the big screen in October of 2019 and was soon released as a video on March 31st, 2020 to Universal Home Entertainment. The rating was a PG-13 for some violent content and thematic elements. There were animals killed, particularly a horse, by AC currents, and a twist to the story centered around the development of the electric chair, which was also violent content. So yes, the rating was definitely at the at least a PG-13. The movie had a had a budget of thirty million dollars. Some critics referred to the fact that the directors and producer did all that they could with their budget, suggesting the movie could have been better if the budget had been increased. Well, what did the movie bring in as profit? The box office sales, along with video sales, ranged around $13 million. That's no profit to the investors or underwriters. They, in fact, lost money on this movie. However, I really enjoyed the movie. I was explaining the plot to my cousins, and they all wanted to watch it. Critical reviews from every source were mostly underwhelming. Some referring to the movie as boring. I would say in general, the reviews did not promote the movie at all. Peter Bradshaw of The Guardian gave the film three out of five stars and concluded that the film was illuminating, but not quite as much as it could have been. Bradshaw felt that it took in too much in too little, in too little time and really should have focused on Edison and Westinghouse's lives to a greater degree. One critic even referred to the fact that director Gomez Rajon was better suited for Netflix or streaming movies. They expressed surprise that the movie was received as well as it was as well as, as it was by big screen audiences. On Rotten Tomatoes the overall rating by viewers was 81%, but I think it, I would have rated it I would have rated it higher. Christine Lemire is a film critic who often writes for Roger Ebert, and her take on the film sums it up by stating that she thinks the end result feels rushed, and that the script doesn't allow either Cumberbatch playing Edison or Shannon playing Westinghouse to shine. Michael Phillips, writing for the Chicago Tribune, gave the film 2.5 out of 4 stars. He called the movie an interesting mess. Sorry to say, no Oscar nomination here. Let's get into some of the thoughts about the movie script. How would you describe just what the movie is about? I already know it is a great drama between two great inventors. Thomas Edison and George Westinghouse, the greatest inventors of the industry age, is what authors believe engage in a battle of technology and ideas that will determine whose electrical system will power the new century. Edison is backed by J.P. Morgan, and he dazzles the world by lighting Manhattan, but Westinghouse, aided by Nikola Tesla, sees fatal flaws in Edison's direct current designs. Westinghouse and Tesla bet everything on risky and dangerous alternating current. We've already stated that it is historically based on true happenings. However, there are a few scenes that take creative liberties to what make this story flow. But technically, the movie follows the truth. I know of a few of those creative liberties you were talking about. One example is the relationship between Edison and Westinghouse. The current war movie depicts two fleeting encounters between Edison and Westinghouse and one conversation, meeting at the pavilion at the World's Fair and meeting in a courtroom was shown in the movie. In researching the, the historical accuracy, 
there is no record that the two men actually ever met in real life. There's another, there's another example occurring about Edison's wife. The movie made you believe he had this undying love for his first wife and the terrible scenes where she had died. Later in the movie, though, he was shown with his children and no other woman was mentioned. In reality, after his wife Mary died in 1884, he married his second wife in 1886. Mina Miller was her name. And he proposed to her by tapping out Will You Marry Me in Morse code on the palm of her hand. He was with Mina until his death in 1931. She passed away in 1947. Another fault with historical accuracy is that the map that was shown several times where Edison so fervently wanted to spread his electrical lighting grid. That map had listed Arizona and Utah, though they were not even states yet in 1880 when the movie is meant to be staged. There are really, there are some really critical remarks on the internet about just how many inaccuracies there are throughout the movie. So I think in general, the movie concentrates on the story about how electrical lightning came into existence. So, I have a question. If the electric company was named the General Electric Company, just what was Edison credited with? The true story about Edison reveals that Edison held 1,093 patents. He is credited as being the inventor of revolutionary items, such as the phonograph in 1877 and the incandescent light bulb in 1879. To some degree, he's also credited with the creation of motion pictures in 1892. Did Edison invent movies? You know, the ability to make movies. Not exactly. Near the end of the current war, we see Edison put his focus into developing movies, and it was implied that he created motion pictures. Edison did create small, a small movie studio, which he could rotate to capture the best sunlight. In May of 1893, he held the first demonstration of his device. Did he make a movie then? Not a movie in the way that we think of it. His film featured three of his employees pretending to be blacksmiths. It was a peephole viewer, not a real projection on a screen, and it allowed only a singular person to watch at any given time. Why couldn't Edison see the value in alternating currents that Tesla invented? I read that Edison described the idea of alternating current as a, and I quote, a splendid idea, but utterly impractical. So why was he so opposed to the whole thing? Again, it's about money, the Gilded Age. Edison didn't want to lose the royalties he was receiving from his direct current patents on the systems his company had already installed. And he just didn't want to pay Tesla for his invention. And as the movie shows, Tesla ended up with Westinghouse. Another thing. Did Edison really electrocute dogs and horses to demonstrate the danger of Westinghouse's AC current? Yes, that is true. Edison held multiple demonstrations where he intentionally electrocuted stray dogs and cats with AC current. He wanted the public to fear AC power. He even electrocuted cattle to instill this fear. They played dirty against each other. There was a lot at stake. Well, the irony of Edison's campaign to discredit Westinghouse is that both AC and DC currents were very dangerous when handled incorrectly. Do we use DC current today? If electricity is supplied by AC current, what good is DC current? Oh yes, very much so. DC current is used in computers, solar cells, LEDs, and electric vehicles. Anything that takes a battery. There is a renaissance, a renaissance in recent years with DC. It is likely we will see an, an increase in AC and DC working alongside each other instead of battling it out for dominance. 
What were some of your favorite scenes in the movie? One of my favorite scenes in the movie was when Edison and Westinghouse were talking at the fair, and Westinghouse asked what it felt like to create light, create the light bulb. It made me think, if Edison would have just stopped that train in the beginning of the movie, would he and Westinghouse have gone into business together and eventually made AC currents? Yes, that was an interesting scene there in, at the pavilion in Chicago. Westinghouse had won the bid for presenting at the fair, and when Edison passed by, you just weren't sure what was going to happen. Another clip I liked is when Westinghouse went to see Tesla in his hotel room. In that scene, it displayed Tesla's behaviors without saying anything. For example, in the, uh, in the way Tesla tried to center his chair, adjusting it three times in quick succession and him having three pairs of shoes in a perfect line, and three canes against the wall. It, let, it led you to understand why he couldn't build his invention outside of his mind. He was brilliant, yet flawed. Based on his characteristics, they now believe he was autistic. I could see how the director was attempting to let the viewer know the depth of the personal issues facing Tesla. He needed the hotel room for privacy and was known for wanting to be alone with his thoughts. Do you remember any memorable lines or script in the movie? Yes. And it was excellent advice. When Westinghouse was talking to journalists, he said this line. If you want to be remembered, it's simple. Shoot a president. But if you prefer to have what I call a legacy, leave the world a better place than you found it. This was a memorable line in the movie. What he was trying to say was he hoped to leave a legacy as the one who lit up America. He kept repeating this theme throughout the movie and wanted to stay honest and not follow corruption. And another great line in the movie was when the major stockholder bolted into Tesla's, Tesla's Westinghouse office. Tesla was pondering the AC motor and was sure it would be a success, but the stockholder had no time for Tesla's suggesting. He had not even been made a, he had not even made a prototype. The stockholder wanted something the public would buy and buy it now. You could see the real force the mo uh, that moves things. It's not AC DC. It's not currents. It's currency. And of course, this ties right in with the Gilded Age. It was about financial success by any means. Tesla was fired from that job. By the end of the 19th century, it was common to employ immigrants and underpay them. In the beginning of the movie, when Edison hired Tesla to assist with the DC motors, uh, Edison lied to Tesla about the wages he would be paying them. He offered Tesla $50,000 to improve his motors. Tesla performed the job in just a few months, and when he approached Edison about his payment, Edison laughed in his face and said it was an American joke, and Tesla didn't even understand it. That's when Tesla left Edison and went to Westinghouse. In the movie, I disliked how the music didn't really match the mood or tone of the situation. The music made the movie feel somewhat cluttered, and it was difficult to pay attention to the words. The music, in my opinion, should have been selected differently. One of the things I disliked was how rushed the story was. It felt like as if the director was trying to cram as much as he could into each scene. The story was too big to capture in 109 minutes. You're right. The only time when the script slows down is in the emotional scenes when Edison's wife died and the Westinghouse's partner died. Also, did you notice the scene in Tesla's hotel room in the last scene of the movie with Edison and Westinghouse together? Or acted out to reach the audience emo emotionally. Something I did enjoy about the movie was the history behind it. Just the story of the light bulb and knowing what happened before electricity was normal was interesting. There was a section in the movie where Edison was about to light up an entire block of houses and all the people gathered around to watch like it was the most amazing thing in the world. 
I just think it's cool how people felt that way about something we now see every day and almost take for granted. Benedict Cumberbatch played well as a narcissistic jerk. You could actually feel the arrogance seeping through the screen. Not only that, his character flip-flopped and almost moved me to tears during his wife's funeral scene because the movie made you realize he did have feelings. Tom Holland, Edison's secretary, also did an amazing performance, although I am partial to him because of his role as Marvel Spider-Man. His character being Edison's secretary was a minor role, but played well, as Edison's moral compass and also helped Edison socialize because Edison was often disassociated with society. There was a clip that demonstrated this well. It was when it came out that it was Edison's idea to use AC currents for the electric chair and Samuel Insull, Tom Holland, confronts him, the, uh, confronts him. The reason he respects him was not only because of his brilliance, but also because he said that he would never invent something that would hurt someone else. The movie was an enjoyable historical drama, and I learned a lot about the people in the late 1800s. This movie was really worth seeing, and I implore you to watch it. Please remember to check out my other podcasts listed in the description below. We are going to end it here, and thank you for listening. I'll see you next time on my channel, where we stay current with the times.